and they were praying to Krishna, depending on Krishna, and they went out the door and they saw $100 bills floating down the street. They just picked a few up and <laughs> paid for them. So, like this, uh, we depended on Krishna. And when he asked George Harrison for the donation for a Krishna book, George Harrison's face went black because he thought, oh, you're just like all the rest. Then the lights went out, the lightning struck the house, the lights went on, and George said, well, I can't argue with that. <laughs> so, um, yes, we were very much, my husband and I, we were sent out to start a temple. Um, that was the process. If you were at after one year, uh, they uh, checked you out of the temple, and you had to go start your own temple anywhere without money. They just dump you, you know, drop you somewhere on the street, some new city where there's no boys, and there you go, just do it. <laughs> start your own temple. And so um, yes, we were. Uh, Prabhupada had a lot of faith in us, much more than we had in ourselves, and so we were empowered by Sri Prabhupada. Tamal, His Holiness Tamal Krishna Maharaj had an operation and he had a vision in the, when he was under anesthesia that Prabhupada was reporting to the previous Acharyas about the people on this planet. And Prabhupada said they don't have any austerity, they don't have any cleanliness, they cannot follow rules, they're not, they have, but one thing they have, they have faith in me. And that's why I can do anything with them. Yeah, we have faith in Prabhupada. In India, it's, it's, you know, they say, if you tell them Krishna is the Supreme Personality of Godhead, they'll say, you know, why not Shiva, why not Durga, why not so many hundreds? He came and told us Krishna is the Supreme Personality of Godhead. He said, yeah, why not Krishna? He's got long hair, he plays, he's a musician, he plays the flute, he's got a girlfriend, you know, yeah, we like that. Uh, King of the hippies, <laughs> Lord Krishna. But anyway, yeah, so we have no problem accepting Krishna. Yeah, why not? He's the Supreme Personality of God. Sure. So our first verse um, is, is a glorification of Srila Prabhupada because uh, there's all these categories of sinful people, sinful births. Uh, but it doesn't matter who you are if you take shelter of the pure devotee. You can also become a pure devotee. So let's read this verse 2418. I'll sing the first line and repeat after me. Kira the Hunandra Pulinda Pulkasha. Kira the Hunandra Pulinda Pulkasha. Abhi the Shumha Yavana Kasada. Abhi the Shumha Yavana Kasada. Kenech Papaya Pashaya Shaha. Members of the Kasa races and even others addicted to sinful acts can be purified by taking shelter of the devotees of the Lord due to His being the Supreme Power. I beg to offer I respect for basis unto him. So, which category are the Swedish people in this, uh, in this list here? Um, uh, you know, or the Scandinavian people, or the European people? I guess Europeans are in the list, yes. Kunz? Kunz. Germans. Huh? Germans. Germans, yeah, they're Kunz. Uh, maybe Vikings? Uh, are, we have to add, maybe we're the, in the other category, there's others. <laughs> so we have all these lists, but there's also others. So if you're not in the list, that means other, others. Uh, sinful people, but it doesn't matter. You can also be delivered by Krishna. So in the Prabhupada, Prabhupada makes a few points. Number one, there's no bar to be a devotee. Your body is not a disqualification. Only one qualification, you take shelter of a pure devotee who has knowledge of Gita and Bhagavatam. And Srila Prabhupada said anyone from any part of the world who knows these books very nicely becomes a pure devotee and a spiritual master, and he can reclaim everyone. So all you have to know is Gita and Bhagavatam, according to Srila Prabhupada, and you become a guru. So this was Prabhupada's miracle. We had no qualification at all. 
there's no qualification to be a Vaishnava. But uh, he made us devotees, and each one of us is an example of Prabhupada's miracle. That uh, he transformed us, he, he gave us the holy name, and we did change our birth. Uh, sometimes there are uh, criticism in India, they say, unless you take birth in a Brahmin family, you cannot do puja, you cannot worship the deity. But Sri Prabhupada said that by initiation, you become transformed. By chanting Hare Krishna, you become, you change your body. By initiation, you change, you get a Brahman body. By chanting Hare Krishna, you get a Vaishnava body. And even though you cannot see how your body is changing, the subtle body is changing. And that's the second birth to each other when you take initiation. So therefore, uh, Prabhupada convinced them that when we went to India, that yes, these are Vaishnavas, please accept them. In Vrindavan, it was a little bit difficult, and not only in Vrindavan, everywhere, but Prabhupada, he, he convinced that yes, these are Vaishnavas. And so Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he also had problems 500 years ago in spreading Krishna consciousness because he elevated low-born people to a very high position. Haridas Thakur was Namacharya, and so many examples. Achina Prabhupada said that if, if the people are honest, then they will accept that this is a cultural, this is a cultural movement. To change the heart, he wanted a revolution. Uh, and we were, we were into revolution. And he, but his revolution was different. It was not violent, it was not overthrowing some other party. The revolution was a revolution of the heart. That he wanted to transform the hearts of the people all over the world. And that's what he said in the beginning of Srimad Bhagavatam, that this culture will transform, it will be a revolution in the hearts of all people. So, as we said yesterday, there's only one problem, and that is how to accept Krishna. If we can accept Krishna, then our hearts will be transformed. And so, we are following the footsteps of Sri Prabhupada, we're following the footsteps of Lord Chaitanya. He, he was the example of accepting everyone. So therefore, we should not give up hope. We should always have hope that, yes, there is a chance for me. I think um, um, one of my friends was talking to one devotee from uh, the Rathiatra party uh, with, uh, yes, and he happened to be a politician and, and, and he became a devotee. And my friend said, well, to him, there is hope for all of us if you can be a devotee. <laughs> so, um, yeah, he thought that was pretty funny too. Uh, yes, so there is hope for all of us. We can all become devotees just by the mercy if we follow the pure devotee. And that's what we did. We had Guru Nishta, we had complete faith in Sri Prabhupada. And we were able to do miracles. We were sent, my husband and I, we were in India since 1972, so they would send us out, we would get kicked out in the first 10 years, maybe 10 times, uh, or six, six to eight times we were kicked out from India because of visa. So they would send us to some strange country and we would have to, without money, one phone number, and we would have to get our visa and come back to India uh, without any money. But we, we did it. And so this, these were the things that were going on in, in the old days. So we were empowered by Srila Prabhupada. So verse 19, you do not have, and I will, you have every other verse. So I will say what this verse is about, but this is a very important verse. Because it tells, Oh, first, this, the last verse was, okay, we don't have a qualification. But in this verse, it tells that there is a qualification to worship the Lord. So listen carefully if you can find out what is this qualification. First, he's glorifying the Lord. He is the super soul, the supreme Lord of all self-realized souls. He is the personification of the Vedas, religious scriptures, and austerities. He is worshipped by Lord Brahma and Shiva and all those who are transcendental to all pretensions. Being so revered with awe and veneration, may that supreme absolute be pleased with me. So there is a qualification, who worships the Lord? This verse tells, who worships the Lord? Did anybody catch it? Who is, yes, you got it? Those who are free from pretension. Does everybody know what that word pretension means? Okay, so let us discuss. What is pretension? What? I, can't, I didn't hear that. Make believe. Make believe. Okay, make believe.
believe. Uh, anything else? What is pretension? If you have pretension, you can't worship the Lord. Huh? Acting. Acting. You, you, you pretend to be something. Pretending, else. yeah. Pretension means pretending. Pretension. Pretend. You're pretending to be something you're not. Pretension. Honest. Honest, okay. Without pretension means to be honest, yes? Pretending means pretending to be the body and the Christian servant. Okay, pretending to be the body and not Krishna's servant. Good. Anything else? Pretension. Yes. It's a false ego. Sometimes we have this bubble that false ego. To be like this. Okay. The false ego is pretension. Mm. So there's another meaning of pretension. That means you have some motive for doing something. Hidden motive. Although most people do see if you have a motive. I mean, it's not so hidden, especially amongst devotees. We can catch it. Um, so be careful, don't try that. But uh, yes, have hypocrisy. So pretension is very uh, something that will get in the way of your devotional service. So the devotees there are above pretension. Now in the purport, Prabhupada talks about three categories of pretending. Karmis, Gyanis, and Yogis. They're all pretenders. They're all, they all have pretension because they all have a motive. Only the devotee is without pretension because he desires everything for the Lord's pleasure, as we see here in this verse, that Shukadeva is praying, may the Lord be pleased. So when you have that intention, then it's very important that you do your service with the intention to please Krishna. And this is very important. Um, and that's the difference between a, a, a pure devotee and a mixed devotee. A mixed devotee has some mixed desires that he wants something for himself. A pure devotee, he simply wants to please Krishna. So that's number one. Number two, the pure devotee depends on the orders of the Lord. And number three, he's always ready to do his duty for the Lord's pleasure. Now, in act of devotion, there is a verse in Yavilashita Shunyam, Karma Gyana Navutam, Anukuyena Krishna Mishinam, Bhakti Uttama. Anukuyena means surrender. That means that I do this service to please Krishna. So, this is another thing you can do before you do anything. You can say, or even after you do it, you can say, if you forget to do it before, Krishna, I want to please you. This is for you. This is for you. I, I want you to be enjoying in this service that I'm performing. I want you to be the enjoyer. Enjoy me. So this is anukuyena, the intention to please Krishna. And without jnana and karma, without being covered, means that you have faith that the goal is bhakti and the process is also bhakti. Because gar karma and jnana have different goals. And karma and jnana have different processes. So if you're not covered by that, that means that you have faith that the, the goal is bhakti and the process is bhakti. So very simple. So how to be free of pretension? Uh, Prabhupada says, special stress is given to devotional service of the Lord by Shiva Shukadeva Go Swami. So all we have to do is devotional service. Shavanam, Kirtanam, Vishnu, Smaranam, the nine processes. And we heard a new one yesterday. Does anybody remember the new process of devotional service that Shukadev added yesterday? He added another one that was different from what we're usually hearing. Is it yet? Ikshanam, seeing the Lord. That's another new one. If you just see the deities, if you just see the books, that's also accepted as devotional service. So verse 20, we do have, and this is the mentality of the devotee. He's glorifying the Lord in all his opulences, how he is the Lord of many different things. I'll say the first line and repeat after me. And notice there's a word that's repeated, pati. Pati means Lord. Pati means husband, it means Lord and husband. So let us hear verse 20. Shriya Patiya 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 
So today we'll be doing uh, in the evening. So this is what you can look forward to. Number one, you'll never have difficulty keeping your body and soul together. You'll get money, in other words. Or you get maintenance. You may not get money, right? but <laughs> you will certainly be maintained. Uh, number two, you'll get purified. And number three, you will get promoted to the spiritual world and find out your real identity. So that we want. We don't want to pretend anymore. We want to know who we are. And if you take up the life of the devotee, that is your real identity. It's a life of service. So Krishna is our leader, Prajapati, because he maintains us. Lord of our intelligence. Prabhupada said, one is highly intelligent by the grace of the Lord, and one is a fool by the same control. So it's up to him to make us intelligent or foolish. Uh, and Prabhupada was talking, if you search for a PhD, if you want to find out how many PhDs there are, you won't find that many in this world. But if you want to search for fools, then you'll find a majority. In fact, when I was in Ireland, they had a festival, and they called, it was called Festival of Fools. Uh, so everyone went out, and they dressed like a fool, Everyone made a fool of themselves for three days. And uh, actually, the way we see it, it, it uh, you know, it's every day they're doing this, but they just thought for one day uh, they're, they're doing this, making fools of themselves. So, yes, he, intelligence is coming from Krishna. And Lokapati, he's the owner of everything. Dharapati, Lord of the Earth. He married 16,000 wives at once. And... Uh, he says, the conditioned soul is proud of becoming husband of one wife, but the Lord laughs at this, <laughs> because he's the husband of everyone. And so I, I think you must have heard that court case in Poland uh, with this nun, this Christian nun. Um, she, went, she made a court case against Krishna, because she said he's immoral, he's not God, because he had so many wives. <laughs> So the devotee asked the nun, well, what vows did you take upon becoming a nun? She wouldn't say. So then he read out, I vow to marry Christ. Then he asked, how many nuns in the world? <laughs> so 
case dismissed. You know, Christ had a lot more wives than Krishna. So, so therefore, uh, yes, Krishna, he's the husband of everyone, Lord of the earth. Um, so you cannot defeat Krishna. Uh, and 16,108, that isn't so many, you know, when you think about God, you should have unlimited. That was my question. When I heard, heard, I heard the story, they were telling me when I was in New Bhakti in Boston, and they said, Krishna had 16,108 wives. I said, only? <laughs> <laughs> He's God. You could have, you know, why limit him? <laughs> why make it limited? But anyway, yes, when he came to this earth, he only showed that many. But in the spiritual world, he has unlimited number. Uh, can account. Can account his wives. Okay, so verse 21 is about, you don't have it? It is the personality of God and Sri Krishna who gives liberation. By thinking of his lotus feet at every second, following the footsteps of authorities, the devotee in trance can see the absolute truth. Learned mental speculators, however, think of him according to their whims. May the Lord be pleased with me. So there's two categories of people here, and that's the, the uh, mental speculators and the devotees. Prabhupada explains the mentality of a devotee. Here it talks about remembering the lotus feet. So how to remember the lotus feet of the Lord, Prabhupada tells us how in the prayer court. And this will sound very familiar to you when I tell you what Prabhupada says. A pure devotee thinks himself fallen into the ocean of birth and death, and incessantly prays to the Lord to lift him up. He only aspires to become a speck of transcendental dust at the lotus feet of the Lord. Have you heard that somewhere before? Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and Shri Shastika, Ai Nantatanucha, Kinkaram Patitama. Please pick me up, I've fallen somehow into this mess, into this ocean of material existence. Yeah, my my son on Facebook, he put a picture of an ocean and one hand sticking out like, like this, meaning everything's okay, and just a hand sticking out. I said, yeah, that's how everyone thinks in this material world. And, and I just put this, this prayer underneath it, please pick me up and make me, <laughs> I'm drowning. Everyone's drowning, but they think, no, it's okay, everything's good, but they're drowning. So Prabhupada said we should incessantly pray this prayer. Does anybody know what incessantly means? Desperately. Desperately. It means... Without stopping. Hmm? Without stopping. Without selfishness? Stopping. Without stopping. Good, good. Yeah, without stopping. Without incessantly, every second of the day, we need to pray to the Lord. And this is how. This is uh, Prabhupada's advice to us how we should pray incessantly. The swan of my mind may sink into the stems of your lotus feet. So now we heard about the devotee, let's hear about the mental speculator. Prabhupada talks about, uh, and this, this is in the purport, he says that uh, they all differ in their conclusions. Every mental speculator has a different idea. And if you go to India, every Indian will have a different philosophy. You have one billion, um, we will have one billion philosophies if you ask everybody go find different philosophy. So mental speculators they have and Prabhupada says at the end they make a useless compromise saying as many conclusions, as many ways. Uh, like I'm okay, you're okay. That was in the hippie era. There was a book I think, I'm okay, you're okay. Prabhupada said, I'm okay, you're not okay. <laughs> he didn't go along with it. <laughs> Peace and flowers and 